Good evening and welcome to the June 11, 2018 meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council. Let us please pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Would the town manager please uh, conduct the roll call? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Chairman Jessica Sullivan. Here. James Jamie Garvin. Here. Penelope A. Jordan. Here. Sarah W. Lennon. Here. Valerie A. Randall. Here. And Christopher M. Straw. Here. And uh, Caitlin Jordan will be joining us shortly. And uh, please excuse my pinch hitting tonight. Deborah Lane will not be joining us as she has an election to work on, work on tomorrow. Yeah. I have a couple announcements before I ask for town council reports and correspondence. First of all, I'd like to thank Jim Hubner for organizing our Memorial Day parade and ceremonies. He did a wonderful job, as always. And also many thanks to all who participated, uh, especially our Grand Marshal, Bob Crane, and all of our veterans. And thanks for the fire station for having coffee and donuts for everyone. Uh, tomorrow morning, uh, tomorrow's voting day, the polls open in Cape Elizabeth at the high school at 7 a.m. They're open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Please get out and vote if you haven't done so already. Tomorrow, the town clerk's office and the tax office will be closed all day long due to staff needing to be at the polls. Family Fun Day is Saturday, June 16. Parade starts at 10 o'clock in the morning at Cottage Farms Road and Shore Road. And there'll be events all day long. There's more information about that on the town website. And the weather is supposed to be very good. So that's a good thing. And also uh, on Wednesday, July 4th, the town hall, the recycling center, and the Thomas Morrill Library will be closed. So now I'd like to open it up for any town councilors with reports or correspondence they'd like to share. All right, seeing none, we'll proceed on. Could we please have the finance committee report? Thank you, Chairman Sullivan. Um, everybody has uh, in the packet the dashboard um, for uh, this month, um, getting down to the end of the fiscal year. Um, so uh, much of the um, much of the information here reflects uh, what will be near to closing out the year on uh, come June thirtieth. Um, Matt, anything you want to highlight specifically? From this month's report? Sure. As, as you will notice, uh, we are at or, or closing in on 100% in just about every category. The uh, areas that we the, that we highlighted, as I've spoken in the past, our building permits still seem to show uh, significant significant growth over uh, year over year, as well as our cable franchise fee, which I've talked about a couple different times. Uh, the one idea, uh, one thing that's related to the building permit fee is this year we will also see uh, decent growth on the municipal valuation. On local on the local value, where the assessor has been able to uh, capture a good uh, a good amount of that new new value, so we will see that in this year's commitment as well. So that'll that'll help towards the bottom line uh, when it comes to committing of taxes. Uh, the other area on expenditures, we are looking at legal services, which has just completely uh, run roughshod over from where we had anticipated. A couple of things that did come along, and we'll be addressing that in July's agenda to uh, in, in year-end transfers. And the other areas that we did have, we had a couple of uh, work over on our public works, vehicle maintenance, and a little bit on fuel. But we will stay within the whole department line item budget. Uh, we'll, we'll be balanced with it's still a slight surplus at the end of the year when everything is balanced out. Thanks, Matt. You're welcome. Um, any questions for Matt on that? Um, <clears throat> the only other thing I know we have an agenda item for later this evening to schedule an additional workshop. Um, not quite sure if we've nailed down the agenda for that, if, if that's going to be when we're going to be talking about fiscal 20 planning. Yep, one, one, uh, three of the uh, four issues, uh, one is the HR director, uh, one is the finance committee uh, position, and then 2020 uh, fiscal year goals uh, to set that out. Yep. Those are three of the four items that we have. So I just wanted to highlight um, for anybody here or watching that um, you know throughout the spring there's been a, a lot of discussion through the budget process about 
um, you know, getting a further head start on next year's budget planning and next year's um, finances and um, potentially some administrative positions that, uh, within staff that um, may continue to evolve how, how we manage finances in town. So those will be upcoming and, and likely based on our vote tonight to be uh, at our workshop on the 16th. So that's all I have. All right, thank you. Any questions for the finance chair about the finance report and the dashboard? Huh? Okay. Um, any, I'm sorry. Did ahead. anybody have any questions on the other supplemental um, readouts, the reports? No. Thanks. Sorry about that. That's no, okay. And now we have uh, an opportunity for our citizens to uh, come before the council to speak for something that is not on tonight's agenda. Would anyone like to speak to the council on something that is not on tonight's agenda? Okay, seeing no one, we'll move on. Can we now please have the town manager's monthly report? Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I will be briefer than I anticipated, as you spoke of three of the, three of the four points that I uh, three of the points that I had in my report this evening on uh, on the polls tomorrow, as well as uh, the office being closed. I do want to point out that uh, on June on June 29th, in order for all offices to close out their fiscal financial books in anticipation of the new fiscal year, uh, the town office will be closing to financial transactions at noon on that day. Staff will be working on closing out the books. All of our departments will be open, but uh, we will be unable to do financial transactions. So mostly affecting the town office, the library, uh, public works, community services, everything else will be open and available. Uh, Beverly Terrace storm drain project is currently underway and expected to be completed by early July. And let's see. Looking at uh, Family Fun Day as well on Saturday, I do want to, folks to understand that this is probably one of the few opportunities that you'll be able to see a, a public fireworks display that we'll have, because I understand Portland has canceled theirs for this year, so uh, come on, come all to support local organizations. It's also a huge opportunity for fundraising for, for the year. Uh, two weeks ago, I did attend the GP Cog PACS annual meeting and summit at St. Joseph's College, and it was a great event with a program focused on such issues as housing first, uh, housing affordability, sustainable uh, practices I mean, with government, as well as other regional issues, and also focused on traffic and uh, transportation. And this Thursday, I'll be attending the Eco Main annual meeting at Thompson's Point. At this meeting, all the annual reports will be delivered, and the new officers will be installed. And then finally, if you observe winter moths at your property, please report them to the town. <coughs> Tree warden, excuse me, uh, Todd Robbins. There's an article on the town website that describes what the, winter, what the winter moth caterpillars appear like and the contact information for the tree warden. This is an ongoing battle that can only be aided by residents also helping us by reporting. That is all I have for this evening's report. All right, thank you. Any questions on the town manager's report? All right, thank you. Moving on, uh, the next item we have is a review of the draft minutes of May 14, 2018. <coughs> Excuse me. Is there uh, uh, any uh, uh, motion to approve the draft minutes of May 14, 2018? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Oh, uh, any discussion? Councilor Straw? So um, <clears throat> I've kind of run out of energy <laughs> on this, so I, uh, I, I don't think I'm going to make a motion to amend, but I do want to point this out. Uh, page 12 of the meeting minutes, um, it's just the inconsistency that we're verbatim quoting one particular commentator and not to, we're just generally summarizing others. Um, as part of our last workshop earlier this month, we were looking for some consistency and it's just looking at it, it seems like there's still that inconsistency going on. Um, I, I lean towards giving it a pass this month because of the fact that I assume these minutes were put together prior to the workshop. Um, so I just wanted to point that out, that the inconsistency is still there at some level. And then the motion uh, to amend, to ask the school board to meet with us, um, I don't think it accurately characterizes the amendment um, fully. We didn't ask for them to come present answers, it was for them to just come and present what they had already put together. So it wasn't like we're going to ask them questions and they're going to give us some answers. It was, oh, come in and just 
give us the presentation you previously gave. Um, and so, what, excuse me, Councilor yeah, Starro, uh, would you point to what that specific item? Sure, uh, page 12, uh, right it's above item 87-2018, 1, 2, 3, 4 text lines up. It says, and present answers to the Janet Villiati's memo. Um, I don't think that's necessarily the best language. It's, um, it wasn't really, it doesn't fully capture what we did. Um, that said, I'm, I'm kind of spent on this issue, so uh, I just flag them both as things I'm not necessarily very, um, uh, I'm not necessarily, uh, what's the, I, I'd like to see it a little different, but I'm not gonna make a motion unless one of the rest of you wants to. Thank you, uh, is there any other discussion? All those in favor of uh, approving the May 14 minutes? It's 6-0, thank you. And now the uh, review of the draft minutes of April 9, 2018. Is there a motion to approve the draft minutes of April 9, 2018? These were tabled from May 14, 2018. Is there a motion? So moved. So moved. And is it seconded? Second. All right, and discussion. Councilor Straw. So obviously the, um, the discussion that happened last month was whether to adopt them as drafted or otherwise uh, subject to my proposed amendments. The issue being that uh, the draft that's before us, it, um, mm -hmm. does it still include the attachment? No, I so, don't believe so. So we're going with the, the copy that was uh, presented for this meeting as opposed to the ones from last meeting. All right, sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? It's unanimous, 6-0. Thank you very much. Item number 95, request, request for a zone change to business zone A, 560 Shore Road, relating to used car sales. This originally was brought forth by a citizen for consideration and it has since gone on to the planning board which voted unanimously to recommend an amendment for town council consideration. Um, this is a zoning change, and so that's why we're having a public hearing on this issue. So I would like to open the public hearing. Uh, where is the gavel? Oh, it's not here. <laughs> the public hearing is now open. Who would like to speak to this item? <laughs> now, what, what we need is your name and your address, and you have three minutes. Now, my personal address or the business? Uh, both. Okay. Uh, my name is Ray Clark. I live at 8 Live Right Way in Wyndham. Uh, the, I'm the owner of Cape Elizabeth Service Center, 560 Shore Road. And basically what I would like to do is go to the state and request a used car um, plates for my property for the business. I cannot go to the state until I get a signed statement from the town saying that I'm zoned in that area. So um, I want to quell a few fears that I've heard. I don't want to use car lot, okay? I, the repairs are my business, but I get a lot of people that would like to purchase cars or are looking for a used car. And I just want to offer, <coughs> excuse me, a little nervous, offer that service. Um, a lot of people, their car no longer is fit for the road. They need something right away. And I get calls all the time for their child is getting a license and they need something. So I'm only looking for like three cars at a time. No big signs, nothing like that. Just a continuation or not a continuation, but a, um, just building the business in a, another aspect. Uh, just offer my customers another another thing that they may desire. So that's it. It's not going to be a big floppy guy out front selling cars. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> is there anyone else who would like to speak? All right. I'm going to close the public hearing. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so. 
there's a definition and, and uh, of the uh, repair garage. There's also uh, a permitted use information of business district A. I'd like to ask the town manager if he'd like to give us a little more information about this before I ask for a motion. Sure. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I'd be happy to. Uh, what you have before you this evening Thanks, Council Garvin. Is, <laughs> is, is a request to, to amend the ordinance as it currently is, is constructed for the BA zone. Uh, which is this neighborhood section of Shore Road. Uh, Planning Board did hold uh, a public hearing and they did come back with a 7-0 uh, vote to recommend that they amend it. Uh, as Mr. Clark did state, this does allow him to sell and uh, sell up to three cars at a time. Uh, it also uh, is linked to being with a repair garage. So if, if there's a concern or a fear that you know anyone could walk forward and open up a a car dealership on Shore Road. Uh, without this link, then then that's not going to happen. So this is an important important uh, bit of language that the planning board felt was helpful on this. Uh, and everything else, Mr. Clark really said pretty pretty clearly uh, what we're looking at is trying to to make uh, in in some ways an ongoing use actually legal by by our land use ordinances. So and that's why this is here tonight. And again, the planning board did receive very little comment, if at all when they did hold their public hearing, similar to this evening's public hearing, and they did vote unanimously to move forward. Great. Thank you, Matt. Um, could I have a motion uh, before we get into discussion? A motion to approve the request for zone change to business zone A for 560 Shore Road relating to used car sales. So moved. Second. Council Caitlin Jordan, seconded by Council Penny Jordan. Is there any discussion? Councilor Christraw. Uh, so I just uh, would like to have some brief discussion. We, when this first came up a month or two ago, the one issue was, um, do we send these to the ordinance committee or not? Um, and there was a question whether scheduling the public hearing is getting the carpet for the horse because this hasn't gone to the ordinance committee, is my understanding. This has only gone to the planning board. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Um, so I'd, I'd just like to have a little discussion on that. Um, are we comfortable just, I, my understanding is normally these things do go to the ordinance committee for review. Um, so do we follow that process or on small things like this, do we just vote on okay. that? Okay. Uh, perhaps, oh well. I was just saying, no. I thought I asked that the last time. Exactly, minute, yeah. And we had, there was a history of doing it this way, so ah. we were comfortable with scheduling, scheduling the public hearing, and then if we felt we needed to send it to ordinance, we would at that time. But I asked the same yeah. question yeah. last time. Uh, would the town manager like to speak to that? I'd be happy to, thank you. Uh, yeah, in, in certain circumstances, this is a, this is a good uh, opportunity to amend the ordinance when you have a, when, you, when you're looking for almost a de minimis amendment to it, uh, the planning board can, can weigh in on that side of it. If it was something like a, uh, like a brand new, uh, like later on, the, later on the agenda, talking about the Renewable Energy Committee, when you're creating a new committee or writing up, crafting new ordinance, that's generally when you could look at you know, employing the ordinance committee to a greater level, but in this case, it's, it's a fairly standard uh, amended, um, amendment action that uh, the planning board can, can handle. And if the council does decide it wants to send it to ordinance, obviously you have that you know, that ability, but in this case, it, the recommendation is probably to move forward would be fine. Council Straw? Uh, so then I guess the, uh, the questions that I currently have, which I think I can read the answer into, but to the extent you can give any guidance. Uh, so this is in no way altering the existing signage restrictions. Uh, so they can't be putting up additional signs uh, that it otherwise exceed the square footage limitations that exist for signage in the area. It simply allows them to sell the vehicle without the signage being there. Yeah, that's, that's it. I mean, I, th I think it's, it's very restricted down to, I think, like your normal car for sale sign, uh, very conservative, Although, like, like window, window sign, not a, not a large detail one. Councilor Caitlin yeah, Jordan. This ordinance doesn't in any way talk about signs or regulate signs. Whatever signs he could do yesterday, he's going to be able to do in a month from now. We're, you can't regulate the signs because it's a used car lot. We, yeah. we spent lots of time on that. And so it doesn't touch signs, but he can't add any new ones, and he can't do anything different than he could do yesterday. 
No, I can add, uh, we completely revamped our sign ordinance as a result of the Supreme Court case of Reed v. Gilbert, so all that applies. My, my issue was, uh, isn't the content, it's the sizing, but, it's, uh, but I just wanted to confirm applies. that we're not changing the sizing at all here. So. <laughs> nope. Anyone else? Great. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Awesome. All right. Uh, next item is item number 96, the good table, liquor license renewal. Uh, I'd like to offer the public for an opportunity to comment on this item. Would anyone in the public like to comment on this item number 96, good table, liquor license renewal? All right, seeing no one. Uh, normally, we at this point ask the, uh, to second the town clerk to give us information on the application. Um, Council Caitlin Jordan, you just, want to disclose? Right, just to disclose that my family does business with the Good Table Restaurant. Thank you. Anyone else? Council Penny Jordan? I'd like to disclose that uh, we also do business and also that the Good Table is very kind to an organization I'm involved with, the Cape Farm Alliance. And so um, I just you. wanted to. Yeah. Caitlin, too. Uh, I just wanted to disclose that. All right, thank you for those disclosures. I, uh, does any counselor have any concern about those? Great, thank you. Um, so anyway, uh, normally we ask the town clerk to let us know uh, if there are any concerns with this application, so I'll turn that over to the town manager. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, there are no concerns with police, fire, and code enforcement. They uh, give their full support. Everything's perfectly operational, so. Thank you very much. Uh, therefore, could I have a motion ordered uh, uh, that the Cape Elizabeth Town Council uh, approves the renewal malt, spiritus, and Venice license, liquor license for the good table? So moved. Is there a second? Council Sarah Lennon. Any, more, any further discussion? All those in favor? It's approved. Item number 96, request for fundraising, the Pond Cove Playground. <coughs> Uh, before we discuss this item, is there anyone from the public who would like to address this item before the town council? Please give us your name and address. My name is Erin Taylor. I live at 15 Roundabout Lane in Cape Elizabeth. I am also the elementary school nurse at Pong Cove School. And um, I'm here tonight to ask for support from the town council to fundraise for the playground. The playground has been a project that we've been working on for about five years, and unfortunately, due to funding cuts at the state level, we had to remove that as one of the budget items this year. Um, we have, for about three or four years, we've been working with a landscape architect who has um, designed a beautiful new playground for us, and it was um, part of her design was to be done in phases depending on funding availability. So our first priority was to address Natureland, which is um, designed to be an outdoor classroom for the teachers and a nature learning area for our students. And that was where we saw really one of our major needs out there because there's a lot of um, rot in some of the, um, play, the existing structures that are out there. It's not really a good, um, the layout isn't working really well for our teachers. There's not a lot of access to water for the gardens. Um, we had a lot of loose elements on the ground where children were falling, getting hurt. Um, and so we would really ultimately like to start there. If we are able to have enough funding to do the whole project, we would then look at doing up towards closer to the town library where the existing play structure is. That has had a lot of, um, faulty equipment in it since I've been at the school for five years um, and we've had a lot of wear and tear in the equipment there. It's getting harder to replace some of the elements there because the existing equipment is so old. Um, we've had numerous injuries. It, some of the elements have not passed safety inspections out there and have subsequently come down last summer. Um, and so that was another area of interest that we were looking to fix. Thank you. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Sure, Council Lennon. Um, the structure that is already there that's yellow and red and blue, is, are there changes to that or is that staying? No, we'd, we'd ultimately like that to come down. So um, part of the development on the, that's part of the playground is to open up some more grassy area. What we've heard from, so 
Three years ago, we did a, um, we had a lot of student involvement and we, our guidance counselor went to all the different classrooms and spoke with the students. We also had a staff survey that was put out and what we heard back from the students and staff is that they really wanted more area to run and play and that existing structure is on the only flat part of the playground. And so we're looking to remove that structure and then have a smaller structure that is built more into the hill with climbing apparatuses that we can have more grassy area for kids to do football, soccer, stuff like that. And what would happen to that? Because I have been around so long, I remember when that was fundraise for and installed. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it's, it's, it was kind of state of the art and really expensive. Would that go somewhere else in town or would it be sold? What would happen to it? I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah. Just curious. I think it's old enough that I don't know that it would pass inspection being reinstalled someplace else, but that would probably be an answer for our facilities um, manager. Mm -hmm. Councilor Straw? Uh, so I think of the playground at Fort Williams, which my understanding was that it was in part funded by uh, fundraising as well um, a while back. And one way they accomplished that was by putting donors' names on the little bricks. Are you contemplating something similar that you're going to be coming to us down the road seeking permission for, or are you thinking about just raising funds unconnected to anything like that? That was an idea that I had generated with the Parents Association. I'm not sure at this point. Um, I, I approached our Parents Association to ask them if they would um, be supportive of helping us with fundraising efforts. Um, so we haven't had an official meeting yet to really generate our ideas for how we were going to go about fundraising, but that was one idea that we had talked about. All right. So I don't... Thank you. Okay. Uh, so this this comes before this us because there has been um, approval by the school board for this project, but it's the, the town council has to approve fundraising for any town owned building or structure. So that's why this is before us now. And I would like to point out a council straw that anything like that would go before the planning board and this will ultimately go before the planning board for site review, you know, at, at whatever point, it, you know, they proceed, so. So anyhow, so basically they're here we're requesting that we authorize them to fundraise to improve the playground at Pond Cove. Um, would the manager like to add anything to this? Sure, uh, just briefly, Madam Chair, the, uh, the functional, Part that we're concerned about here is the administrative code and then the town's uh, uh, policy as it came to on, on fundraising from a few years back. Uh, ultimately, as the town council, you are authorized to receive gifts on behalf of the town. And that's kind of why uh, the town council needs to bless uh, any type of fundraising that is, uh, that's brought forward to, uh, to benefit a town-owned property. So that's, that's why, I, and I did have the opportunity to meet with Aaron as well as uh, Perry Schwartz, our facilities director, a couple weeks ago, uh, maybe maybe three weeks ago now, uh, where we were. Uh, she, you know, she, she brought this forward to show me what they were looking at doing, and uh, you know, said, "Hey, I'd like to like to get that on the agenda." And that's kind of why we brought it here tonight. So, and uh, okay. yeah, for, for the things down the road, as such as you know how it gets designed and everything. Yeah, there are the the planning board uh, has its has its uh, responsibilities when it comes to that as well. Great, thank you. <clears throat> Is there a motion to approve uh, the request for funding? So moved. Uh, so moved. Thank you, Councilor Randall. Is there a second? I'll second. Councilor Penny Jordan. Are there any further questions? All those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Item number 98, discussion on implementing a pay display parking system at Fort Williams Park. Is there anyone who would like to speak to this item on the agenda? Please give us your name and address. Sure, uh, good evening, Jerry Canneller, 18 Ivy Road. Um, so I guess in light of the recent budget um, conversations and, and process and things like that, and the, I guess, um, evolving process to get out in front a little bit of the budget process for next year, what I'd like to see um, the town sort of approach is solid, good process around revenue ideas with respect to the Fort Williams Park. And I'm really looking at it from two perspectives. One is to optimize existing revenue sources that you currently have 
Are we getting the most that we can out of it? And the second would be new opportunities, including fees for um, people to enter the park. And I know that's been a topic of conversation in the past. Um, I've been at Fort Williams here the last couple of weekends. My quick math was about 90% of the license plates that I saw were out of state. Um, my guess, doing some quick estimation and extrapolation, is 350,000 cars a year to 500,000 cars a year come in and out of that park from out of state. $10 a pop, that's three and a half million to five million or so in revenue sitting on the table available for us to use in some other way. You have, it's time to look at this and you're asking me to sign up for a 6.6% .6 tax increase. It's really time to look at how we can, the elephant in the room and how we can optimize the revenue at the Fort Williams Park. Thanks. Thank you. Hi, good evening. I'm Bob Hanson. I'm at 17 Ivy Road, and I just wanted to bring up a few points piggybacking on the, the last commentator. Um, let me begin with the sort of the, the big picture, which is we're the most tax state, one of the most tax states in the country after California, right? And among the main municipalities, we're one of the most taxed municipalities. Uh, so we're already beginning with that base, and then there's a referendum to massively expand spending and taxes. Um, I find that really disconcerting because I've, I've already gotten to the point where when my kids are done with school, um, I'm probably going to have to leave the state. I just can't pay that kind of income tax. So I think a lot of folks are facing that kind of tax structure um, and are looking at this new tax as really the straw that broke the camel's back. Um, and like the last commentator, I think we have not ex exhausted our revenue options, the most obvious option is a fee at Fort Williams. Uh, I'd like to see that operationalized before we raise taxes. And I know there are three arguments that I think are red herrings that are sometimes brought up when folks like me make this argument. One is that um, uh, the funding sources are sort of siloed, and I know that the, the funds from Fort Williams don't necessarily go to the town, but we all know that money is fungible and that there are structural ways to ensure some some portability uh, or porousness between those, and I'd like to see us explore those. The second red herring is that uh, the rules would re require us to levy a fee on Cape Re residents too. That's obviously a red herring because, of course, it could be a nominal fee, so that's not really a concern. The third concern is that there may be a, a spillover of parking. If people don't want to pay the fee, they might, they might end up parking in neighboring areas. Um, as anybody who's gone to uh, major cities knows, knows, um, or even uh, smaller cities that are have that have that are parking intensive, you can have a local permit there so that you can't park in the neighborhoods that are around there. I'm in one of those neighborhoods, Oakhurst. I'm not concerned about that. I don't think it's going to happen. In the rare instances when it could, it could be dealt with with one of those um, local displays. So I would really like to see a $10 uh, fee. Um, I think that makes it consistent with all the other venues. It's not out of step with the other venues in Scarborough, um, for example. So, or for that matter, the state parks, um, even in our own Cape Elizabeth at two of the parks in town. So thank you for your time. I appreciate, I know this is a, uh, a tough time for the schools. I don't wanna see the schools compromised. The quality is so important. That's why I'm staying here. That's why I'm going to stay here until the kids graduate. So I get it. I don't want to see that compromise. But I don't think it's right to go to us again with a tax increase before you exhaust that obvious option. So thank you very much. Thank you. Well, hello. My name is Jim Walsh, and I live at 23 Rockcrest Drive in Cape Elizabeth. And I am also a volunteer and uh, chairman of the Fort Williams Committee. Uh, ten years ago, where were these guys? <laughs> I don't ever remember anybody talking to us back ten years ago like that. I mean, that's, that is completely uh, outside the norm. Uh, first of all, thank you for your service. And um, it's kind of an a, a interesting situation that we find ourselves addressing this question again. 
And uh, of late, if you've uh, been staying up with the newspapers between what's going on up in Acadia and uh, the cruise ship uh, article this weekend and then the article today, uh, how timely and some of the commentary in there is just absolutely um, amazing when you think about you know, invading a community with a shipload of folks 17 stories high and how that affects that community and can have devastating effects long term. You folks have already made a decision about the long term for Fort Williams with your recent uh, uh, decision. And I think it's that, that sort of um, stewardship future for future generations that you have to look at this entire operation. A um, Couple things, first off, um, the committee is 100% behind what it is you are about to deal with and where we stand ready to support and at any level whatever it is we have to do. We've put in front of you a commercial vehicle proposal which you're going to attend to I guess at the next uh, workshop and that's really to close off Stroud Circle to, uh, to, any, to every and all vehicles uh, that are bus size. Um, so you're going to have basically the trolleys in there and that's about it. And again, if you um, think about those efforts, they're all about controlling traffic, controlling the long-term use, and increasing the value of the, of the visit experience. Because these are things that have been problematic for a while, and we're hopeful that we can, um, we can start to calm those things and, and make it a much better place. What's interesting in today's paper is that the cruise lines take between 40 and 70 percent of the bus revenue, which I was absolutely shocked because I've sat in negotiations with bus companies who have said um, in no uncertain terms how this is going to kill their business and how it's going to cost them and everything else. And then when you see that the cruise line is taking 40 to 70 percent of that income, it's just amazing. So. We've put a proposal in front of you that is going to raise the bus uh, fee to $75 on a go forward basis. And I feel like we ought to go back and rethink that <laughs> because we're probably not getting our pound of flesh. Right now in your budget, you have $49,000 worth of income from bus revenue. We're projecting in our new proposal about 87,000. So if we were to just do a quick math and go up to 100 bucks, you know, we're talking another 20K. So the long and short of it is there's a lot of things on the table. I'm here to encourage you to think about this long term. You were elected to do this job. You were elected to make fiduciary decisions for the community. You are elected to be the stewards of our assets. This is one of the most important assets that we have. I was on this. Your, your time, time is, is up, up, Mr. Wall. I was on this. Thank you. I just love it when I get told that. Um, I was on this this uh, this council when we went uh, to a referendum the last time. I voted against it because I didn't think that the town council should be kicking that can down the road. That particular debate was all about keep it free. This thing cost three million dollars in the last ten years. It's cost the the the, 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 the person who lives in town three hundred bucks a year. I just feel that at that time it was about having and sharing our beautiful park. It's not about that. This is about preparing ourselves and preparing the park and all of the operations for the future so it doesn't get trampled because it is becoming, as you know, the destination here in Southern Maine. Anyway. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. Can I ask him some questions? Sure. Um, first of all, I, I strongly encourage you to raise it further. I like 100 bucks. Second of all, <laughs> seriously, I totally agree with you that mm. we're giving it away and other people aren't. Well, now that we know what the Now that we know going. where the money's going. <laughs> Secondly, um, I'm sorry, there may be something I haven't read, but when you said you're not allowing the buses in there, that's, that we're, means no buses or they simply can't park in a certain The trolleys place? are going to be able to go into that circle and the, handi the handicapped buses, the small ones from Piper Shores and so yeah. forth. Yeah. But the larger buses that carry 50 plus people yeah. have to go into the main parking area and there's a drop off and pick up area. So and what's the main parking area? Is? And straight ahead as you come down the hill. Okay. okay. They have to stay over. It's 
Okay. Yeah, it's, it's between oh, the soccer field, the field and the... Is and this the light house? Yeah. Okay. You got it? Yeah, yeah. Location. And then um, will it be a requirement that they cut their diesel engines? Yeah, that's also in, in the proposal for them okay, to cut sorry. them. Yeah. I'm asking you. We also understand that many of these buses, the new ones that are being built, even though they complain that they only have 92 of them in the state of Maine in that article, <laughs> uh, the newer buses have a have a uh, auxiliary engine, um, which is not diesel, to keep the bus cool for those people who have just been off it for 40 minutes to come back to something a little more climate controlled. Final question. Um, can you comment on what those gentlemen said about um, um, entry fees versus parking fees? And that, that uh, by sort of inherently an entry fee, you could charge more. Uh, 10 bucks might be steep, but. Yeah. Um, the $10 number is kind of interesting because the um, Arcadia has gone up to $30. You probably read those articles. And they did a great job from a public relations standpoint educating folks on the dollars that you're paying, additional dollars are gonna go into making the park experience that much better. Um, this $10 number, you know, I don't, I don't know about that. I, I had a vacation recently and I was at uh, uh, Fort Lauderdale by the sea and I decided to take a day of my vacation and follow the rangers around the waterfront because they have pay and display. And I uh, just spent the day, my vacation, wonderful, and they charge you more money per hour, the closer you are to the, to the pier or to the water. Mm. So the further away from it you get, you pay less money. The other thing I learned during that one day is that when they first implemented them at Fort, at Fort Lauderdale, they, um, they chased parking tickets for years because they charged by the hour. Now they charge a two hour minimum at $5 an hour because they figured out that everybody stays about an hour and 11 minutes. But, but, but you don't, and, if you only charge for parking, you're not capturing the, the tons of people who just drive. Yeah, uh, again, I, you know, that, that could be something you folks could consider. I'm not, I'm not sure I would complicate right. the initial discussion, which is a serious enough one, um, down the road, that could be something that could be done down, you know, that could be a secondary process. But I think if you had a minimum two hours in the park, you know, say it was $2 an hour or whatever, um, this gentleman's number, I mean, you know, <laughs> to come up with five million bucks, I mean, I, I think that's a stretch. I really do. But I do think that what you're going to do is cut down on having families with 10 cars coming to Fort Williams on a weekend to have a picnic. They're all going to carpool now if they have to pay four bucks. Um, long and short of it is, I think that that you've got a tough decision in front of you, and uh, the committee's here to help and support in any way we can. I know it's a tough one. I would encourage it not going to referendum because I believe that's what you folks were elected to do, and I hope that you'll take that responsibility and make a decision. Elsa yeah. Straw, did you have a question? Yeah. I, um, if we, as part of this process tonight, um, forward it to the Fort Williams Park Commission to give us a turnkey <clears throat> solution yeah. for us to approve, uh, and we provide you with a number of guidelines, how quickly do you think you could turn that around and have it back to the town council? Well, we meet, we meet every month. We, we, um, the proposal you have in front of you that will go to workshop was a subcommittee of the overall committee. It was a very different approach. And we wound up having uh, essentially two meetings a week for like five weeks. And we were able to turn around what would have taken the committee probably six months in a couple of months. So I would say that depending upon, I mean, you could certainly, whatever you turn back to us, you could say like a decision by July 15th. I mean, bottom line is we, the subcommittee worked extremely well because we were able to really delve into the issues and get the answers and then bring it back to the full committee for its final decision. And is this something you think there's enough of uh, an appetite and uh, commitment from the Park Commission that you'd be able to do a um, more frequent meeting in order to get it done and turned around by, say, August 1st? Well, we work, we work for you. So uh, if you tell us what you want, You're also we'll volunteers. work on it. <laughs> and, uh, but we, we do need some help from the folks that are professionals in that area. Um, and I understand that the town manager has, has a, a, a list of folks that, that could certainly share their learnings from York as well as what's going on in Scarborough so that we don't have to reinvent the wheel. This is not nuclear science this whole issue of pan display. Anything else? No. Thank you. Great, thank you. 
Uh, would the, would the council and uh, council agree to have a citizen's already spoken come again because he's raised his hand? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Great. Thank you. Yep. That's fine. <laughs> Hi again, uh, Jerry Mr. Canella, Canella, yeah. Road. So I just wanted to clarify my thoughts. So for a Cape resident, we're already paying taxes here to support uh, the community and the schools and things. So my understanding is differential pricing could be. Uh, apply here, so a penny for a Cape resident. For a Maine resident, a dollar. I'm really targeting the out of state, the other 49 states to the extent that Alaska and Hawaii can get here by car uh, at the $10 rate. Uh, I've been down to the Wells Sanctuary, I believe. I can't remember exactly what it is. They charge me $5 for the car to, to go in and walk around the sanctuary. So I don't think a 5 to $10 rate, uh, given the um, attraction that Fort Williams is, is, is out of reason. Thus, I think we need the healthy discussion in the town with the council, Fort Williams Park, and the residents to try to figure this out. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. I'll close that. Uh, okay. <clears throat> So we are, this item number eight, discussion on implementing a pay display parking system at Fort Williams Park. I know that our town manager does have some information for us, so it might be a good idea to let him present us with that before we start our discussion. Thank you, Madam Chairman, I'd be, I'd be happy to. Uh, since we met last time, uh, there was a couple of questions that were raised by uh, different councils. Council Strong in particular had asked about you know, if the council wanted to do something on a short term to figure out you know, where the town, you know, what the town could anticipate uh, if we could rent uh, units instead of having to buy them or lease them. And uh, speaking with one of the vendors who we, I reached out to, they'd be happy to do that if you needed to rent that, if you wanted to implement that to see, you know, how, how it was being embraced, if you wanted to go down the pay display uh, parking road. So that, that could be done in fairly short order. Um, there, are, there are obviously a number of other issues that do come up as well. Uh, in order to implement such a such a system, I don't think it's a Herculean task to do it. But you do have to have language in there relating to traffic, like a traffic ordinance along those lines, that gives you the ability to enforce uh, parking restrictions. So that there's a lot of that out there. York has a, has a great model that they that they've gone through. But that is something that you do need to put. It, you, know, you need to house it in the right part of the ordinance if you do want to enforce it as a local local rule. Um, Ultimately, the reason why I brought this forward this evening, speaking with Chairman Sullivan, and to get this forward, uh, I'm at the point that you know I need direction from the council, quite honestly, to tell me what what you'd like to do, and more importantly, what uh, what four councilors would like to do, because <laughs> I need a majority to tell me in what direction. So if we put a lot of energy into this one way, and then come to find out that it's not popularly supported by the council, then what are we accomplishing, at least from the staffing side of it. So that's kind of why I brought this or asked to have this come forward this evening so council can tell me and give me direction as to what you know what, we, what you want to do. If you do want to refer it to you know, the park committee and let them run with the ball, I'd be happy to work with them on that to move that forward or whatever the council's wishes are. But, uh, but I think at this point we've had, you know, this would be the fourth discussion within as many months. Uh, just to get some direction from council would be, would be great for, for, for me and with staff. Great, thank you. you know, we, we, as as uh, as Matt has mentioned, we have we've had discussions at three workshops already about this. So, so we're we're still we're still talking. <laughs> so, what are councilors thinking? Councilor Lennon. I agree. We should send it back to the Fort Commission, and I for a quick turnaround. I personally would love to see a back of the envelope price on. Um, what would be the short and long-term cost for a pay display um, and, and what would be the short and long-term cost for an entry fee. I mean, I actually agree with these gentlemen that almost every park you go to, not just in this country but in the world, you pay to enter and you pay a pretty sizable amount. I mean, 10 bucks is actually pretty cheap compared to 20, 30, 50. You don't think twice about it in an arboretum or whatever. I mean, granted, the fort's smaller, but without having to consult a ton of experts and so forth, I'd just like to know literally at the back of the envelope, what would it take? Would it be a booth? Would you have to staff it? Could you do it automated? Would people use a credit card? And, and, and what would it cost to put meters in 
in all the parking lots and have the system, which I hope would all be digital, to crank out parking fees? And what would, roughly, what would we net with both and what would we invest? Um, before I proceed, actually, the, Matt has some information on, 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 on the for pay, those on, numbers. Yeah, on the pay display side, I, I did a, <laughs> A little bit more than a back of the envelope, but just this much more. <laughs> to be honest, uh, these, I mean, there's a lot of in-depth you could go to, but you're looking at roughly about $400,000 net revenue, and that'd be you know year year one, uh, you know full stabilized income type of thing. But there's there's a lot of moving parts in there. It could it could be greater, it could be less. It depends upon the fee structure. Uh, as far as an as an entry fee, I. I haven't performed that analysis, but it's one that I think could be accomplished. Uh, looking at, you know, talking to Scarborough and seeing how they make out at Ferry Beach or other places like that, what they're looking at for traffic counts, different, uh, you know, different traffic pattern altogether. However, probably similar numbers, I would think, when it's all said and done. I just have one f f follow-up mm -hmm. question. Um, the four hundred, yeah. By the way, Ferry Beach, great. Suggest so that's at least ten. Um, the the the. the the four hundred thousand is that that's based on what for an hourly rate or a two hour rate uh, average fare uh, four dollars so you're looking at a uh, minimum two hours at two dollars per is kind of what we we're looking at when I initially did that study or and did can, that analysis I swear that's my final question can you <laughs> Tweak how much you charge per hour. Does it have to be two? Can it be three? You can do whatever you want. Council sets uh, council sets fees. Yeah. Thanks, Council Straw. So I'll try to hit a couple of those. So uh, the and using an entrance fee rather than parking, uh, the Park Commission. We previously looked at that. Um, my recollection is the issue is where do you put the entrance booth? Because uh, you run the risk of causing a backup onto Shore Road. One of the proposals from the master plan back in like 2001 or 2004. Uh, had proposed a turnoff as you enter the park up on the right, but it was determined that the, the, there wasn't enough room really for the cars. So that was one of the big issues. The other was that I think the deed, we've been told this multiple times, I've never actually seen the deed. The deed carried a restriction that we have to always allow free access to the headlights. Is that something along those? But that we, we need to maintain public access to the headlight. Um, I don't know whether it allows us to charge. I've never seen it, but it, it's been unclear. But there might be some, uh, point being, there might be some restriction on if we can actually charge a fee for entrance. Um, but one was how do you, uh, we'd have to reconfigure the entrance in order to allow a turn off so that the traffic doesn't back up on shore and create a traffic jam. The other was can we even do an entrance fee? Um, but then, um, Additional question for the town manager. Uh, can you break out, separate from the net, uh, what was the cost for the machines? Uh, do you have roughly what the numbers would be per machine to lease or to rent one versus how much it would cost per machine to purchase it? Well, there's a couple of, there's a couple of uh, answers I can give on that. Uh, you can lease purchase. Uh, I know it sounds funny, but, but when I talk to them about leasing, if you wanted to have it, say, for a three-year term, uh, and then replace the machines with, with new machines kind of as they reach the end of their life. Uh, they said, well, we'll do a three, you know, we'll do a, what they call a four year lease. Year three, you know, year one, it's X amount, year two, it's X amount, year three, it's X amount, year four, it's a penny and you keep the machines. Uh, they don't really wanna, don't wanna, want to take them back. Uh, but they, they do have that as, as one approach. So that would obviously lower the entrance cost on that. It would be an operational expense. Uh, you're pro depending upon how many you're looking at, you're looking at roughly four to five thousand dollars per unit uh, as a cost. So it just depends upon how you wanted to deploy them, how many you wanted to put in, in, in what and in what parts of the park. And these will be cellular driven, I assume, and then also uh, are they battery powered or do we have a hard power line to them so that there needs to be power at each of the individual locations? You'd, you'd probably be running hard hard line power to them. And then do we need some type of localized repeater in order to have cell service in those dead zones? Or um, can they use like a Wi-Fi that's mounted at the gift shop or? You could, you could actually do it that way. You could access, uh, that's one workaround. If you wanted to run it through a Wi-Fi and uh, we are looking at a couple different items right now uh, to expand like the, the, the private Wi-Fi um, in the park uh, down front because the Beach to Beacon needs to have more access for public safety when they have the beach beacon, they need to have more Wi-Fi access. So that may be a workaround when it comes to trying to you know, communicate between the devices and uh, transferring money into, into the account where it needs to go. But they have, they ran into similar, similar constraints in York 
and they did some workarounds with boosters on the on the units themselves because they have, you know, the, the topography there doesn't work very well either. So they had some there was some learning curve there that they went through already. So it sounds like the only kind of initial investment we would additionally have to make with infrastructure would be making sure we route uh, we route power to whatever locations the machines are going to be at. And, and concrete, you know, uh, yeah. for pads, things like that, just for the installation installation area is what you'd be looking at for infrastructure costs. And how uh, how soon could these be installed if if we weren't to you know take this step? I think. The installation part of it could be managed pretty quickly. Um, getting the units on board, I mean, it's just a question of ordering them and getting them in place if you wanted to at least purchase them or if you wanted to rent them. I know we had, uh, the gentleman I spoke to had like half a dozen units that he could deploy immediately. Mm -hmm. Then it's just a question of getting the, the you know, mm -hmm. manpower on the ground to actually, you know, do, put the concrete in and make it so they could actually operate. And then, and then there's the question of the language with the uh, enforcement and how, you want to go around that part. Okay, so these could be rented like for a year as sort of a pilot program. Yep. Okay, Councilor Penny Jordan. Um, I'll say this once again, installing hardware is an easy part of a project. Doing yep. processes and procedures and what are the other guidelines which surround that is where it gets time consuming. So the nuances of uh, what's it mean to citizens? How will that work? Uh, what are the kinds of cards or whatever stickers would need to be? So all of the nuances are what kind of takes the time. Hardware installation is usually pretty slick. So I'll just yeah. add that. Yeah. Councilor Valerie Randall. Um, I'd like to know a little bit more, I think from the Fort Williams Park Committee, but also to get a sense of where the councilors are on whether we want pay and display or pay to enter before making any sort of commitment to even rent the machines because even if we do put them in, I think it would be probably a three year time frame that we'd want to look at to see you know, how that panned out in the end and then if we ended up taking them out, I can imagine there might be some concrete that needs to be removed and things like that. So I think that's one thing that I'd like to hear more about. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. As uh, I think you're right, Council Randall. As far as wanting to have a longer term, you know, if, if you're looking at doing it this year, you're looking at mid to late summer. You know, best case scenario, as Council Jordan did state, I think I think she's right in the center of the bullseye. The the hardware is the easy part. It's the it's the language that's the that's the challenge. Uh, but I do agree. I think. If you're going to do it, you'd want to probably look at a three-year because you could get stabilized income at that point in time to really know where it was going to be and you'd have the vagaries of like a rainy summer and that could happen or things like that that come into play that could fluctuate your income up and down one way or the other. So like with many like income properties, a three-year stabilized income statement would probably be the best way that the council could look at that. Uh, I, I will say this also, once you get past three years, you're probably never going to take them out. Uh, reality is what it is at that point you've got income you have mm -hmm. infrastructure you have acceptance or denial depending upon how it goes but yeah well, I, th I think once they're installed they're they're probably going to be there would be my take on it how's it Garvin um, I want to be clear that I'm not opposed to uh, pursuing this and even potentially implementing. Um, I was one of the louder voices um, as we went through the most recent budget season in talking about the need to find diversified revenue sources and come up with creative solutions to old problems and things like that. Um, I continue, as I said at the last meeting when this came up, to maintain the position though that I think that this is all moving really, really fast and with all due respect, I'm not prepared to at all move forward on a decision on anything with anything that is, again, respectfully, Matt, slightly more than back of a napkin, Matt. So among the many, many questions I have about this are how many cars can we reasonably accommodate at Fort Williams Park? It's something that we don't know the answer to. Um, that would be a fundamental question of mine to understand how much potential revenue uh, is at play here. Uh, how many out-of-state uh, cars do we see on average? 
How many Maine or non-CAPE vehicles do we consider discounting for either neighboring towns or other Cumberland County vehicles? Can the equipment handle that if we choose to do that? What is our infrastructure and process for collecting from violators? We don't, like other towns, currently have a parking, um, you know, a parking department uh, as part of, uh, you know, municipal operations. So how are we going to be doing that? Um, I disagree with Mr. Hansen, my neighbor who spoke before. Um, I, I do have concerns. I, I, I agree with your first two points, but not your third. I do have concerns about the spillover into residential areas because that's happening today with no fee. Residents of Surf Road, the parking lot for Playstead Field and some of the road entering into Sherwood Forest on days when the park is at capacity for parking and people go in and look for a spot and then turn around and come out and park their car at Playstead Field and then walk across. So that's even without a fee, we're seeing impact and spillover into those neighborhoods. If we have a resident permit sticker, well, what happens when out of town guests come over and need to park in front of your house or even frankly, you know, in the case of Oakhurst, if somebody from Broad Cove wants to come to my house and park outside and they don't have a resident sticker. Um, it was already addressed before, but I think that the idea of having a, uh, an entry fee versus parking is a non-starter for me because I, I can't imagine building a gatehouse, staffing that gatehouse, and then creating the impact to traffic at the intersection of Shore Road there. I would imagine the next conversation we'd be having then is when do we install the traffic light there? Um, I think that we should strongly consider this being a peak seasonal fee if we're going to have it. Um, I don't think that it's reasonable to be charging in the off season. Um, this is, if, if um, you know, if, if we're strictly looking at this as a revenue source, that's one thing. If the other intended, um, which, which I've heard in other discussions that hasn't come up today, if the other intended purpose of it though is to um, have a crowd control mechanism, then it doesn't seem to me that there is a crowd control problem between, say, November 1st and April 1st. So um, anyway, those are among many questions I have. Um, and I would like to have concrete answers on those things. And then the last thing, and I've said this before too, and I'm glad that um, uh, Park Committee uh, Chairman Walsh brought it up before. Um, I think that before we go adding any of these new fees, uh, we should be exhausting the existing ones that we have, not only the bus fee, but other park use fees. There are a number, you know, everybody that is not as informed on this issue thinks that there's no fees in the park. There are a number of fees in the park. And I think, you know, I, you know, I think we made a mistake in the past by not addressing those um, more, more thoughtfully in terms of uh, what ceiling there was uh, and that we should, con we should strongly reconsider our position on that and, 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 and take this into account uh, in terms of what more can we extract from our already existing fees. So those are my points. Thank you. Councilor Caitlin Jordan. Of course, I, I agree with most of that, if not all of it. I think we need to have a workshop, and I know we're going to have an agenda item that schedules another workshop because we have so many things to workshop, but this is really a discussion, like Jamie said, that we need to be having in a workshop, and I would like all of the answers to the questions he just asked, and then we can ask some more, and then we'll probably need to have another workshop where we talk about what to do with all that information, because like Penny said, the hardest part is going to be coming up with the language and the plan. It's not the purchasing. And we really haven't had meetings where we sit down and come up with the plan. We're talking about this idea and we're throwing it out there over and over. The last few months we keep saying, yeah, this is what we could do, this is what we could do. But if we're going to do something, then we need to sit down and have an hour to an hour and a half, maybe two hour discussion about true option A, B, C, what is the plan, what can we put forward and brainstorm this. Because we're really not actually going anywhere right now. Councilor Straw, uh, Lennon. Um, well, I think what Matt was asking for was just some direction so he could pursue some more information. I personally don't think we should talk about it in the workshop until we have more facts. So I think this is slightly productive and that Matt can come up with some alternatives and Jim can take it back to his group and they can think about it. So not that we have to talk about this any longer, but I'm just saying the reason we keep going over and over is because we don't really have concrete facts. 
But in response to what Jamie said, um, not to sound like a jerk, but if we're going to go through all this and it's going to be controversial in town, we're going to get, I'm sure, a ton of um, um, <laughs> pushback and anger. And you know, it's going to be a huge infrastructure project and it's basically all around an enormous amount of work for staff and everyone else. Honestly, in my opinion, 400,000, that's half of what the state blithely cut you know, in a, in, a, in a flip of their pen. That's just not that much money to go through all this. So my position is, if we're going to go through it, I think that we should go hard. I think every possible space that could possibly be considered a parking space in Fort should have a meter in front of it. I think the minimum we should charge is $3 an hour, and I think we should charge all year long. Otherwise, it's just not worth it. If we're not making a million dollars out of it, why are we even bothering? Because a million dollars, frankly, isn't that much money in a budget of you know, 36 million. That's just my opinion right now. <laughs> because we've been talking about this for 20 years. Like, if we're going to do it, let's do it. Councilor Garvin. I want to, again, say I, I don't disagree with the idea of generating the revenue. But for very precisely the reason you're saying, if we're going to go and make a hard decision that very well might be unpopular, I don't know. I mean, I think, this, I think the public opinion on this has probably changed a lot. But in spite of whatever the public opinion might be on it, I want to be able to go to people and say, this is exactly what we're going to get. And this is the process we went through to determine that this had value for us versus just saying, ah, let's just throw them up there and see what happens, which I feel like we're racing to, you know, I'm, no offense, Chris, but I hear like, could we, you know, could we be there for August 1st? And I'm, I'm like, I think that that's crazy to have not done the due diligence. Right. That's all. I, I, you know, I, I don't, I don't disagree with the likely outcome on this whatsoever, but I just think that we need to be much more buttoned up versus just saying, let's just throw up some parking meters. Uh, Councillor Straw was next. Uh, so, uh, Jamie, totally agree with everything you said. Um, the August 1st date was just to get a proposal back from them as yeah. opposed to on the ground. Um, I also, the, the, I agree with almost every, the, every way that uh, Councillor Garvin has characterized and what we should be looking at, and I would hand um, almost all of that to the Park Commission and say, here are some guidelines, go look into this and find the answers to this for us. Uh, the only additional caveat I would carve out is I would like it to be a one-year trial. Um, I'd probably be willing to accept a two-year trial. Three years is too long of a trial before deciding one way or the other for me. That's it. Councilor Penny Jordan. I just wanted to say that uh, I agree with exactly the direction that uh, Councillor Garvin is is proposing, and I too I don't disagree with uh, uh, increasing revenues in the park. What I do want to be able to uh, have happen is uh, the straight face test has to be passed. We have to be able to say with conviction that this is the direction and this is why. And I think in order to do that, you have to do the analysis. So, okay. Anyone else? Well, I mean, I, I would agree with that. I think that um, you know this is this has been a, a, a ye many years in the in the coming, and I think we're going to have to begin somewhere. And it is a big change. I think that we could certainly put together some more concrete numbers. Um, how many exactly current spark parking spaces do we have? If we charge X number per space, per whatever, we can say what that is, and I think that would be extremely valuable information. Personally, I don't think an entrance fee is uh, something we ought to even worry about right now because of exactly what Council Straw has said, and we've talked about this in the past, we don't know what would happen to Shore Road, we don't know where we would put a, a gate and all that sort of thing. Um, you know, the, the pay display parking, uh, to me, has always been the most attractive way to begin because it's passive. You know, people come and they park, and then it's, you know, something that it certainly seems to be an easier way to ask, essentially, for a user fee. I mean, this was built as a military reservation many years ago. We now have a million plus cars and people, and, and we have a responsibility to take care of this asset, and which averages $250,000 a year above any revenue that we have. So we, we've got a huge fiduciary responsibility as well as our stewardship. Um, so I'm hearing that everyone is pretty much interested in, in tasking the Fort Williams Park Committee 
with coming back with, with a proposal. Am I right on that? Is that what Councilor Randall? Yeah, it, in addition to a proposal, I think something I'd like to see, and it sounds like others are some, some numbers about who's visiting the park, where are they from, how many visitors a day, what time of year, those sorts mm -hmm. of things. You know, I, I think that's valuable. I, I also, you know, would like to, to just throw an out of caution to that. Some, some of these studies, we've, we've had some done in the past. I, I gotta tell you that uh, I was there before Memorial Day weekend in the middle of the week with company from Virginia. I, it was a mob scene. And, and I was hard pressed to find a main license plate. I think to a certain degree, you know, you're right. Uh, Councilor Randall, I think that is valuable information, but I, I certainly think that anecdotally, it's, it's been become incredibly obvious that there's unbelievable use, especially in the last five years. So, I, you know, I'm not as strong in wanting that kind of a study personally, but you know, if that's the will of the council, we could certainly go that way. But in terms of asking the Fort Williams Park Committee to proceed um, with a proposal, uh, is there, would the council like to keep this to a pay display and not deal with an entrance fee right now? That's what I'm sensing, but am I correct with that? Let's just keep it to pay display and ask them for information such as exactly how many parking uh, spaces do we have? What would you propose for fees for those? Um, um, and what would you propose for uh, cables with resident fee? We have learned that we must charge our own residents because of federal and state grant monies we've received in the past. Um, and anything else I'm missing so that we have a clear task with the Fort Williams Committee. Is there anything else councilors think that we should be asking? I think, oh, yeah, I, Councilor Garvin. <laughs> I understand past work that may have been done and, and the perceived value or not of that. I, I guess what I'm just really, you know, forgive me for being a stickler about it, but if we're making revenue projections on a potentially um, tiered pricing scale, then I, I don't know how we can do, do that without some sort of estimate of, okay, if out-of-state cars are going to be priced this way, you know, in-state are going to be priced this way. If, if any of those things are on the table to be considered, I don't know how you can evaluate that without having the data to support it. Second of all, I, I, I also don't know, it could be a non-starter if the um, equipment itself can't handle that. So mm -hmm. I don't, I, I, I'm not, we don't pay different prices in Portland at a pay and display meter, you know, because we're a main plate or not. I'm, I'm not sure how, how mm -hmm. the technology works to accommodate that. But. Well, I, I'd like to I'd like to say that I, I mean I personally don't see that there would be any tiering of fees because for that one question I think that came up before we I don't know how the software would handle that I think personally the fee is the fee you know um, but that's my own personal opinion I don't know how but you know we could have to find out digitally and that's something we could ask the Fort Williams Park Committee to uh, suggest I think. Councilor Straw was next, and then Councilor Kaitlyn Jordan. Yeah, so I just add on uh, the list of things for the committee to give to us is a, a platter, a menu of options of here's what it's going to cost if you purchase the machines, here's what it's going to cost if you lease the machines, um, and here are our recommended locations for installing the machines. This is how many machines we recommend. Uh, a menu of options like that. I'd like to have that bundled in as well. With respect to the revenue projections, uh, this is something the Park Commission talked about for like the last two or three years, where we want that, yeah. we, we, uh, when I was on it, we wanted that data, uh, we didn't have it. Um, I, I kept floating the balloon of all you, we could just ask a high schooler for their high school project to just sit there and set up an iPad camera for uh, some period of time, just record everything, and then go home, sit down, play it on fast forward, and just count the license plates as they go through. Uh, there are options out there, but we instead looked, uh, the town looked at trying to use uh, the greater GPCOG or one of those entities to come and do a survey for us, because they had done one back uh, about five or six years ago, but I think they ended up saying, oh, we don't have the bandwidth for it. That's why it didn't happen. Um, so as uh, with the tiering, my understanding is with the software on the machines, if I recall correctly from the police chief, basically you go to the machine, you type in your license plate, and inside of that database um, or otherwise in the handheld kept by the parking patrol person, uh, they have all the license plates that have like permits or yearly um, 
payments, and it pops up and says, oh, this person uh, gets to park for free in effect. So it's either in the machine or the handheld, but presumably that's data that would come out from the Park Commission when they do their investigation for us. Great, thank you. Um, Councilor Caitlin Jordan, I think you were next. Oh, I just asked a question about the, the pay to display. I mean, I thought one concept was that we would have the town stickers or whatever, so that's your display. Sure. So you can easily create the tiered payment. Okay. Well, why don't we uh, uh, ask the town manager to, to uh, put together, um, you know, in a format these requests for the Fort Williams Park Committee to review. Any other concrete thoughts on what you, information you'd like them to look into? So, okay. If I may as well, yeah. to the chair. Uh, speaking with staff as well, Bob Malley's been great to talk to about this as well as, uh, you know, he's got a lot of different thoughts. It's very similar questions that Councilor Garvin also has uh, as well. So I think, you know, A, I'd like to, you know, ask Councilor Garvin to send me your, your list of questions too. That'd be, uh, that'd be great to have, just to have as a supplemental uh, so we can get that in there. And uh, I think I've got something to work with here if the council is looking to, you know, uh, direct this towards the Fort Williams Park Committee, we're happy to work with them to, to advance advance the question. Um, yeah, the other question about, about the tiering is as far as differentiating. I know in the past, uh, you know, going through the, the records of the different discussions of this in the past, it had found uh, the opportunity to bog down the discussion when it came down to who was going to pay and who wasn't going to pay. And uh, it seemed like the most fair, you know, because there were discussions in the past, if, were, were veterans going to have to pay? Were, uh, you know, was this person going to have to pay? If they lived in South Portland, were they going to have to pay? So when she started to get uh, the different uh, stratifications of who and who was not going to pay, it, it became much more cumbersome at that point. Uh, so, but I think as Council Straw did say as well, that's, that's, those are great questions that the Park Committee could, could look at some of those issues, come back with recommendations, say, you know what, everybody does pay, but if you're a resident, you can do the pay display at X amount of dollars uh, for a year, for a yearly pass. And I think those kind of questions can get answered pretty quick. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? So uh, may I have a motion to uh, author, uh, ask, ask or authorize the town manager to proceed with putting together a proposal for the Fort Williams Park Committee to review uh, <laughs> to put together a uh, request for uh, information, I guess, I want a better way to say it. Um, of the Fort Williams Park Committee to explore pay display uh, and, uh, at Fort Williams Park. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Councilor Randall, any more discussion? All those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Councilors. Okay. Uh, item number 99, Fort, William Park, Fort Williams Park Foundation request for naming the historic stone bandstand in the children's garden at Fort Williams Park. Would anyone like to speak to this item? Chairman Sullivan? Yes. Having previously recused myself from this issue, I'm going to continue and step down for this item. Thank you, Councilor Garvin. Uh, would you like to speak to the Fort Williams Park Foundation? Yeah. Naming of the Council Rock. Thank you. And yeah, your name and address. Uh, it's Jim Walsh again, 23 Rockcrest Drive. Um, the only reason I, I wish to speak to this is that um, uh, Sarah had a, a great suggestion when this was kicked over to the committee, and that was to involve um, the Historic Society and Jim Rowe in particular. And this meeting was probably the most collaborative um, discussion between the Historic Society, the Foundation, and the committee in terms of the history and the background and what the outcome was. And uh, in the end, what you have in front of you is uh, it will be, um, there will be a bronze plaque on it similar to other historic uh, sites in the park. And it will not have council ring on it. It'll just have the history of how it got to be what it is. So uh, I will tell you, it was a very impressive uh, conversation. And I, um, I applaud the, the recommendation to to move it to us and to invite the Historic Society. I thought it was a very good use of, of um, town resources. Thank you, Council Straw. In your meeting minutes, it says that the foundation and TBT will 
cost share on the plaque. Do you know what TBT was? I couldn't figure uh, I that out. I think it was to be determined, actually. Uh, oh, yeah. TBD, got the it. Cost, nobody, uh, we couldn't reconcile what the cost was, and the foundation didn't want to commit to a diamond-studded, you know, bronze yeah. plaque, whatever. They wanted to know what the number was. We, we just said to be determined, yeah. and that, that's really all that was. Okay. We had to go back on the records and see what we paid for the last one, but that's what that was. So, great. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> so on April 9th, we referred this issue to the Fort Williams Park, Fort Williams Park Committee for, for review, and uh, at their meeting on May 3rd, the Fort Williams Park Committee voted 6-0 to support the naming of the historic stone bandstand as Council of Ring. Is there a motion to uh, approve the recommendation of the Fort Williams Park Committee to name the historic stone band stone bandstand as Council Ring. Council Lennon? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Councilor Penny Jordan, is there any discussion? All those in favor? It's six zero. Thank you. Yeah. I'm sorry, what? No. Item number one hundred, consideration of a standing renewable energy committee. Would anyone on the public like to speak to this issue before the council? Uh, Your name, name and address, Julia Bassett please. Schwerin, yeah. and I was the former uh, chairman of the uh, uh, ad hoc energy committee, and we would like uh, to ask the, the town council to. Uh, uh, to act on the ordinance committee's recommendation to make it a standing committee and allow, um, if, if not uh, us, but others, to continue the work of the energy committee. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> so, the, um, we asked the Ordinance Committee to review this request that was uh, originated out of the Alternative Energy Committee. The Ordinance Committee has met and discussed it. I would ask their chairman to give us a little more information. Councilor Penny Jordan. Um, yes, I'll give a little background. Um, basically, uh, we met a couple of times. Um, let's see. What we did is um, initially step back and really looked at what uh, sustainability committees in other towns looked like and how um, what they were accountable for, how they might have been formed, and what their focus was. Um, we held a second meeting where we really engaged um, members of the recycling committee as well as uh, members of the um, alternative energy or renewable energy committee, um, the ad hoc. In order that we could understand how these committees might align from an accountability perspective and a mission perspective, um, and, and basically where we came down is that it, it, it seems a bit early to merge the committees. I can tell you that um, uh, people did not seem opposed to directionally heading toward uh, a way of uh, combining committees. Um, but basically um, the the recycling committee um, had had put forth their uh, priorities for 2018, and they're really into the waste reduction and recycling, and focusing on still have a lot of um, activities to do within the schools or at the transfer station or recycling center itself, and so felt that at this point in time it could potentially de derail some of their focus. Um, in addition, what people thought about is that the Renewable Energy Committee had not been, uh, had not formed and really solidified as a team uh, or as a group, and so therefore it seemed a bit premature to merge them. 
Um, so the recommendation of the uh, ordinance committee is that at this point in time to maintain them as uh, separate committees with the intent of uh, at some point in the future uh, assessing uh, again the uh, the merging of the committees into a uh, sustainability or uh, some committees such as that. But at this point in time, it's felt that it is um, too soon to do that. Thank you. Uh, let's see. So the ordinance committee has recommended that the uh, town council uh, move forward with a recommendation to create a renewable energy committee. And so you've referred exactly. this recommendation to the town council. So uh, is there anyone that would like to make a motion and second, and then we can proceed with our discussion. Would you like that privilege, chairman of the ordinance committee? Um, I would move that uh, we move forward with forming the um, alternative energy um, committee at this point in time. Thank you. Is there a second? second. Councillor uh, Caitlin Jordan, discussion? Councillor so Garvin? Point of information. I, I just heard you when you made your motion refer to it as the Alternative Energy Committee. Oh, sorry. Did you want it to be re renewable? Renewable yeah. Energy Committee. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Straw? Do we have a charge or anything like that at this point for them? Yes, okay. there is. Okay. And it will just be reusing the one from that, the pre existing one? Hmm? It, it, um, they had one it. when it was the an ad hoc committee. Uh, they had actually there was a charge for the committee put forward when it was decided that we wanted to send this to ordinance Got in it. order to determine whether the um, the recycling and uh, renewable energy should be merged. So within the description of committees, you will find that. Got it. One thought I had is that, you know, we, we need to come up uh, with a purpose and duties, uh, which is the structure of our, of our chapter four ordinance, boards and committees. And so if, you, if there's uh, something, do you have something here the council can review now? Isn't we, that, isn't I, that, I didn't, we did was it, it in no, there? It's I, not here. Not, I just found it on, it's. Oh, on, did you? Um, see, I didn't see it. It's I, in there. there it's under the retired, retired committee's Alternative Energy Committee 2016. There's a committee charge document oh, no. that was approved by the Town Council January 4th, 2016. That's not it. I didn't have it on tonight's packet. It's not on tonight's packet, ah, is what I was saying. Got it, got it. It's not on tonight's packet. So it's not in tonight's packet. And that, that's the issue. Uh, Council Garvin? I think also, if I recall, um, there, were, um, there was a dis discussion on last year's council mm -hmm. about whether or not the exact charge that um, was put forth for the ad hoc committee would be, um, there, there were counselors that were questioning whether that charge should be updated. Okay. As opposed to just rolling it over, so. Mm -hmm. Councilor Caitlin Jordan. Right, it, it's not just rolled over, it's a whole nother process, which I thought we did the bullets, I just don't know why it's, not here. So we, we did do the duties and the purpose and, and we ironed all that out. So I don't know if that's just a, a note taking issue that we need to figure out why that didn't get forward along or we need to send it back to ordinance to firm that up and send it back to the full council. Well, what I would recommend is if, if, if the ordinance committee had reviewed this mm -hmm. on what, we did. The, what the committee was going to recommend as duties and purpose, what I would recommend at this point is that we add that to our next workshop, perhaps. Okay. So the council can hash it out because there were different differences of opinion uh, between, I, I recall distinctly, between what the alternative energy mm -hmm. committee was recommending and what so, several councilors were thinking, myself one of them, as what would be uh, if it's a standing committee, what would those duties be? Because the Alternative com uh, Energy Committee had a more narrow focus in some of the things that they looked at, and, and some, of us, some of us were thinking the re new renewable energy would, would I, maybe more broad. Okay. That, that's all. So maybe, I don't know, what do you think? I'm just thinking maybe we take no, this I, to work. No, I don't have a problem with that. I, I know that we reviewed, okay. I know we reviewed the accountabilities. 
and the purpose of the committee. Well, so we need to so get it in a packet. Okay. Exactly. If, if, if I may, mm -hmm. uh, through the yeah. chair. Uh, I think this is already crafted. And okay. if we can have it for July, for the July yeah, workshop, okay. I, for some reason, I, it was either on at the end of the year, it was either December or January. I, I just have to go back and find. I that, have it. Yeah, yeah OK, yeah, because I know it's been I crafted. It. So uh, I, I'm just having a hard time putting my hand on it right yeah. now. But we can have that for, for a July workshop and try to make it a lot easier. Okay, Councilor Straw. Time-wise, my only one concern is my recollection is that they presented the report about a year and a half ago, mm -hmm. um, and it went into a workshop, and I wasn't able to figure out what happened after that. Mm -hmm. My concern is that uh, they gave us what I think was a turnkey proposal for a solar system that was going to generate a significant amount of revenue for the town. It's part of the structure of it turns on tax credits that begin to expire this coming January, is my understanding. Um, so the longer we continue to delay, we might end up missing the boat unless those credits get ex extended or something similar. So that's just my one concern with that mm -hmm. taking much longer on this. Also, Caitlin Jordan. Okay, so to that point then, we need to consider, we already drafted the purpose and duties and all that. So say we have that ready for July and it's good to go. You, what we can decide or talk about tonight is what was suggested, are you just going to take the old committee and plop them into the new committee, or are you going to have to hold appointments and interviews and appoint new committee members, which will draw you out further into the year and bump up against what you're saying? Um, so I guess we need to weigh those priorities. Are you gonna do the whole interview process and this will go so that they'll be assigned and start in January or mm -hmm. December, it's at the December meeting to start in January. So that's more of what we could talk about right now. Any, Councilor Penny Jordan, I would pro I would propose that a uh, if there are members of that committee who are interested in serving on the standing committee, that uh, they should be allowed to come forward. Otherwise, you've got people playing catch up. And it may not be everybody who would be interested, but I think it should be thrown out that uh, as an offer to participate in the committee. Um, Councilor Caitlin Jordan. I, I agree with that. And then I think we should set up some kind of um, random rolling off, roll on system. So the people that decide that wanna come back, they come back and it's already predetermined, just throwing this out there, you got seven people, you know, the list them alphabetically, and then like the first two have one year, the second two have two years, the third, you know what I mean? Like, so it's totally at random, who's got the one year term, the two year term, and then you're able to get into a cycle right away. If people don't want to return, then perhaps we hold um, quick, interviews or you just form the committee and you have the interviews as normal and those people join in January and it's just empty seats until then. I guess come to that when it comes. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure if we can, I mean, we're, with a, a, we, first of all, we have to authorize a brand new standing committee and, and I would be in favor of just opening appointments as we normally do them rather than, you know, stack a deck in advance. I'm not sure that that's fair to all the citizenry and Certainly anyone who had served on that committee would come forward and have, you know, a, a great deal of interest in serving. And I, th I think that the appointments committee would be very receptive to that. I, I, but anyway, Councilor Straw. Uh, I don't know what the status was of their proposal. Um, is it at the point where we can act on it and either say we're going forward with it or not without any input no. from that committee? Or do we, do we, do we need like, that committee active at this point? Or we can, can we just pick it up and run with it? Because um, uh, that would affect, do we need to have the, the people that were previously there and how quickly do we need the group staffed, all that stuff? I, I don't think we're ready as a council to make the decision and we can't because we don't have it in our meetings packet. Oh, oh, oh uh, not for tonight, for like next month. Can we, can we take up the report next month and act on it next month and move forward or say we're you not know, forward? I would say in all likelihood, yes. Uh, Councilor Lennon? So in the importance piece of it, um, you know, it, do, it doesn't have to start in January just because we hold appointments committees. You, we hold them rolling throughout the year. 
So let's say we view it at our, uh, at our July workshop. We voted in, in um, early August. Deadline can immediately post it. You know, there's, there's, there's definitely rules around. It has to be posted in the courier, you know, two weeks, blah, blah, blah. But it doesn't, you can do the, you can do the whole thing in a month. So, and then you hold, because I do agree mm -hmm. with you, um, Councilor Sullivan, that it would be sort of, I think, um, unprecedented to just grab an old committee that has been inactive for a year and a half and put them in a new committee. I do think that, in fairness to everybody, we need to follow the protocol of appointments, which doesn't mean that all the people on the old committee can't apply and come, and certainly, given their, their past knowledge, I suspect you know, that that would be interesting to the committee. But again, I, I do think we should open it up. Okay. Well, I, I, it seems like the council is more than ready and, and as ordinance has already prepared this, we just didn't get it in the meetings packet that we could put this on the July agenda rather than a later workshop and then just okay. deal with it then. Council Caitlin Jordan. I was just gonna say, I don't think we have to wait until, I mean, couldn't you put an ad in the paper next week or for whatever that's saying we're forming a committee accepting applications and then say it doesn't go through in July, it could happen, then the applications are just set aside. But there's no reason to slow the process and wait a whole nother month just to put an ad in the paper to accept applications. We could have it up on the website in two days that you're accepting applications and then you can have the deadline be a week after the yeah. it's approved and then start appointments yeah, that's a good point. interviews i think you could do that sooner so i mean you put it out there just well, no sense in drawing it out I, i'm not actually quite sure about that because yeah, you know, i I, I think that in order to entertain applications people need to know what the duties and the purpose of the committee are. I mean, obviously people who had been on the Inter Alternative Energy Committee in the past would have a very good idea, but until we vote on something and approve it and get it up there. And you know, this, this process, once we do this at the July, assuming we you know, approve something at the July board meeting, this will all happen very quickly. This, I, I agree with you that it has been a long time for this committee, but this isn't an emergency. So I think if we get this accomplished at the July board meeting, then we immediately put on the website, here's the new standing committee, here are the duties and the purpose, then people know exactly what they're applying for, especially new folks that might not have heard of this before. So I think we can get it all done pretty quickly. So just to clarify, we're gonna clarify all this at the, at the, we'll at the July uh, we'll put it regular the, meeting, not at workshop. Correct, we can put it on the July agenda. Got it. And yep, Councilor Straw. And, and so it sounds like, but the proposal, we could also have that on the July agenda, and it sounds like it's at a point where the town council can either say yes or nay on well, the proposal? Well, um, yes, well, Because uh, that's the only time sensitive aspect for me. We, the, I'm fine waiting a month or two, three, four months to staff the committee, so just so long as if this, there is a time sensitive nature to the proposal that we deal with it sooner rather than later. Well, sure, and I mean, you know, our, our ordinance committee chairman and our ordinance committee members are assuring us that that this is ready for us to, to uh, yeah, so yeah. I'm, I'm referring to their proposal I'm sure from a year and a half ago. Um, it was the one to put the solar system in over the actual dump, not the transfer station, um, and the additional solar heating system on top of the schools. Um, I, if I recall correctly, it was something like a $2.7 million revenue pr proposal um, by building this and partnering with a private entity that then could take advantage of the tax credits and we do this lease. Uh, purchase agreement, uh, something, I, I wasn't on the town council, so I'm kind of- Councilor Caitlin Jordan. Here. So what you're talking about, Chris, we don't need this committee to do. Th if you like those proposals, then you need to just say, I think at our next meeting, we should have information about this and the town council votes, we're either applying for this as a town or we're not. The Renewable Energy Committee or whatever we've named it, I'm sorry, does not need to meet one time in order for us to move forward with that. That's what I was trying to get at um, because I, I don't know what the status is with that proposal. Um, it's just sitting on a shelf. There, there is no status. Did Was there um, just not an appetite for it or, because it, it seems like that was the primary work product that this group created. I think there was appetite for some and no. Yeah. Uh, just, that, so my concern something? is that if the tax credits are, extend, are beginning to expire in January, we, if there is appetite for any of it, we might want to move forward sooner rather than later. Thank you. Council Garvin? I would just say my recollection is that there was a lot of other competing, there were a lot of other competing items on our agenda 
um, you know, concurrent to the time where that recommendation was brought forward. Um, and it unfortunately took a back burner to some of those other higher priority things. Um, the council was highly appreciative of the committee's work. I think um, some, not all, councilors saw more value than others in the recommendation. Um, but the, f the failure of action was not uh, one of uh, disinterest, but rather just pr prioritizing other items. So. Got it. All right. Okay. Thank you. Council Caitlin Jordan. I was just going to point out, so a perk of being on the town council <laughs> would be that you request at this point that we have that placed on a workshop or something so that we can discuss it and, and start moving it along. Because if you don't do anything right now, then or, or send an email later and ask for that, it's not going to get moved along. So you need to speak up and I'm just trying to help right now that if you want something moved forward and to, and to start talking about it, then say so specifically and it has to follow through. So, so I will do that if it isn't something that was already discussed and decided not to move forward on. But if it was simply there were other thing, other priorities, then yes, yeah, it I would just like never, to. Yeah, it just right. never went anywhere, basically, right. for other reasons. Council Garvin? So relative to the item uh, before us, I move that we table this uh, motion until the July regular monthly meeting. Second. Any, any more discussion? All those in favor? It's unanimous. <clears throat> item number 101, Spurwink School Reuse Committee recommendation. Uh, at this point, I would like to offer the public an opportunity to comment on this item. Would anyone like to address the council on this item? Madam Chairman, can, yeah. I, mm -hmm. can I get a, uh, a moment of clarity here? Uh, just want to, I'm looking at July 9th's agenda, and I wanted to shoehorn myself in there, but I wanted to make sure I had the most of the table done right. Uh, is the request there from Council Straw to have the Alternative Energy Committee recommendations be placed on July, July 9th agenda regarding the solar array? Yes. Project? Okay. I just wanted to make sure I, uh, my scorecard was correct. That's all. I was, was going to point that out to him later. That. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and then, uh, so, so well, and then what we have tabled is the the, the discussion related to the uh, Alternative or Slash Renewable Energy Committee. Uh, installation, if you will. Okay, as well. but you know, and I'm, thank you for clarifying because I missed something. Uh, I don't, you, you are actually talking about the town entertaining a solar array. Are you talking about the town or an, or an individual's ability to entertain a solar array? Uh, it's whatever is in the, their report. So they were a temporary group. They came up with the final right, report that right. proposed that the town, I, I think what I, haven't read it in detail. I think the proposal was a private entity builds it on town land because then they get the tax credits. And then the way it works is that we end up owning yes. the system at the, something yes. like that. But, well, yeah. I would propose that I don't think a regular meeting would be the place to dive into that. That's a, it's highly complex. That had to do with some very interesting uh, financial arrangements that were, I think that the place for that is actually a workshop, myself. Um, That's what I was going to say. I was uh, going to agree. I okay. Think what we need to do, and what I was going to put out to you, Chris, is after I said all that, you didn't actually do anything. So I would motion that we set a workshop to discuss these proposals in the energy report that Chris has referred to. Uh, okay, so and procedurally. I'm, to I'm totally fine with that too. Okay, so <laughs> procedurally, I made a motion, so it's okay. official. Right. So, uh, where are we? The first motion. Second aid. <laughs> there was a motion at the table regarding the AC, which passed. Now, the, the motion on the table now would be to place the Alternative Energy Committee's recommendations on the solar workshop. array to a, to a workshop. And was that seconded? I seconded. Okay. Yes. So, did, did we vote? Uh, did, we, did we vote on the July 9 agenda for the. Uh, Committee. Yep, that's uh, that was table to July. Uh, oh, yeah, right. Yep. We voted to table. Okay, so now we're voting to approve to uh, a workshop to, to send the Alternative Energy Committee's recommendations on the solar array to a workshop. Yeah, okay. Would yep. you like to have that on the 16th of July? There's a few items on there, but uh, I mean, it's going to be quite a workshop. <laughs> or do you? Or would I mean? Because what what Council well, was talking about is time sensitive. If you're thinking about trying to take advantage of correct. tax credits by the end of the year, so. But I, you know, well, if, if you're thinking about whose tax credits is what I'm getting at, because I, I don't see, honestly, 
I don't see how that would have, if you're talking about 2018 tax credits, I'm not sure that there would be enough time and a workshop to make a decision about the town. Uh, the, because you're, gonna, you're, you're talking about requests for proposals, all kinds of things. I mean, we can certainly start the process, but I, I'm, I just want to say that I, I just don't know if that's something that would happen that, that fast. I mean, I don't. And I've got no idea. <laughs> I, I haven't looked at the report. I just want to get the process restarted. So because it has been sitting there, and let's just get moving. Uh, which is why I thought maybe we didn't need a workshop if you all were up to speed on it. Oh we'd no, be able to just vote yes or no. This is but, highly right. okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's thank start you. Start the conversation. Okay. Yeah. We'll do. All right. All those in favor? Just to refresh our memories, I think it was to heat the pool. No, there were there. It was. There was a lot. It was a lot more than that. Okay. But it was a, it was a technical, it was a, it was technically and financially challenging. So that, that's going to require a lot of, a lot of work. So anyway, okay. Thank you for that. I just wanted to. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying because I, I was not quite. Okay. <clears throat> so back to item number one, 101, the Spurwing School Reuse Committee recommendation. Again, no one from the public wishes to speak. I don't see anyone. Okay. And what I'd like to do is turn this over to uh, Councillor Jamie Garvin, who is chairing this committee. If you would tee this up, please, Jamie. Sure. Thanks. Um, I'd first again like to publicly thank the members of the committee, um, Councillor Jordan, school board members uh, 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 Heather Altenberg and John Voltz, as well as um, Jim Walsh, who was a citizen at large appointed to the committee. Um, and as we discussed at our workshop last Monday, uh, when we went through the report in detail, it was the unanimous recommendation of the committee um, that the Cape Elizabeth Historical Society, Preservation Society um, uh, would be a good and viable use of uh, the now vacant Spurwink School. Um, so our recommendation is that the town manager begin work with uh, the Historical Preservation Society and the uh, director of facilities to look at um, uh, cost estimates uh, for occupancy, uh, funding sources, and other arrangements um, that would be needed uh, with the organization and come back with uh, a recommendation to be made to the council uh, for us to then vote and approve, so. Great, thank you, Jim. Yep. Is, is there a motion to uh, direct the town, council, uh, the town manager to uh, begin further review of cost estimates, possible funding sources, and arrangements with the Cape Elizabeth Historic Preservation Society. So, so moved. moved. Second. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sarah raised your hand, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let Jamie move that as he was chairman of the committee, and Sarah had her hand up, so she seconds. Any more discussion? All those in favor? It's unanimous, thank you. <laughs> Okay, item number 102, nomination, voter registration, appeals board chairman. Is there anyone that would like to speak to this item? Seeing no one, we'll move on. It's a recommendation that um, the town clerk, the town clerk recommends the reappointment of Ann Swift Kayata of 14 Stonebridge Road as our voter registration appeals board chairman. Is there an, uh, a uh, motion? Councilor Straw? So moved. Is there a second? Council Jamie Garvin, is there any discussion? Council Stroud. Uh, just for the town manager, so I can't find this. I'd never heard of this board before. Who else is on it? Uh, do, not to put you on the spot. Um, and it, just uh, could we update the website to add it to our list of boards if there isn't a reason not to? So yes, uh, I, I think we can do that. I cannot right. tell you who the other members Fair. are because it, <laughs> it's, it's, it's almost like our personnel appeals board. Uh, quite frankly, never got it to meet, got hopefully. Right. May not have met in 30 years. Right. Is it a committee or just one person? I think we just have the uh, the one which is uh, Anne Swift Kiata. Okay. Oh, and it's just one. It's person. just in case, so just in case somebody. Oh, yeah, got it. Just got in it. case uh, someone is aggrieved if they if they've had their uh, their name removed from the rolls, they can they can then appeal to to her to got it get them reinstated. It's also not something that's through the appointments process. It's a nomination. So. We had a, a, a motion. Uh, in a second. In a second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? It's approved. Thank you, Ann Swift Kayata. <clears throat> Item number 103 consideration 
of an additional town council workshop. Uh, there's no one in the audience uh, any longer, so I won't offer public comment. Uh, we have proposed that we have an additional workshop be beyond the schedule we voted on in December, and this would be July 16. Is there a motion to approve the re recommendation that we have an additional workshop on July 16? Councilor Lennon? So is, it, is there a second? Councilor Randall, any discussion? All those in favor? Thank it's you. approved, thank you. And item number 104, entering into executive session to discuss labor. Uh, I'm sorry. Excuse me? You, it, July, uh, July, never mind, okay, sorry. Okay. I had the wrong month. <laughs> I thought that was a Saturday. I was like, what? I wouldn't do that to you, <laughs> Councilor Garner. <laughs> Never mind, sorry. <laughs> All right, item number 104. Uh, to consider entering into executive session to discuss labor contracts for police and public works employees. There's no one in the audience, so I won't ask for public comment. Is there a motion to enter into executive session to discuss labor contracts for police and public works employees? Councilor Caitlin Jordan. Yeah, I move that the town enter into executive session pursuant to 1 MRSA section 405 subsection 6D to receive an update from the town manager related to labor, labor negotiations. Is there a second? Second. Councilor Penny Jordan, any discussion? All those in favor? It's unanimous. So the council will enter an executive session and then we will be back to adjourn our regular meeting. So he takes us off the air now. Yep. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>